So for all meditation, as we've been saying today, but perhaps especially for loving kindness, which is an act of giving to yourself, uh, it's really important to find a very comfortable position. So it might be different from the one you've been using so far, and that's fine. It's the last session of the day, so I would encourage you to actually decide if you do want to change, maybe from a chair to the floor or the floor to a chair. Or even if you're sleepy, you might want to lie down with this space. So we have plenty of time. So take a couple of minutes to check in with yourself. Listen to your needs, the needs of your body. Because this helps to relax the mind. And one thing I particularly love about the meta meditation is that it helps me to practice in a way that's not concerned with myself, about my progress, where I'm getting to, whether it's working, but is much more concerned simply with sharing any of the blessings of my life, any of the peace and harmony in my heart. So although metta meditation is naturally very relaxing and be fairly pleasant, even joyful, delightful for the mind, for the heart, we don't meditate or practice metta for that reason. We practice metta just to give. to put aside our self-concern and just connect with that wish that we may have for the well-being and happiness of ourselves and all beings. So at the beginning, just connecting with this beautiful purity of intention in practicing loving kindness without expecting anything in return. These ideas that Ajahn Brahmali has been expressing so beautifully today of kindness and compassion. Just for the sake of being kind. And perhaps we can start by just bringing those thoughts of kindness and compassion, friendliness and warmth to our own body. Getting a sense of your body seated on a chair or on this lovely wooden floor. And noticing that right now you're held, you're held by the ground beneath you. You don't need to use too much muscle or holding the body tight. But you can just allow everything to soften and settle as though melting away into the ground. And bringing a very light sense of presence towards that sense of your body sitting. Including any sensations you experience. It's 
with a very soft and open heart, just allowing them to be. Allowing them to soften and relax. Perhaps bringing up a feeling of gratitude to your body. Even if, like me, you may have indigestion or an ache or pain somewhere. Or any other discomfort or disease, still this body is serving you so well. Enabling you to be here and to Practice the Dhamma. So just imbuing your body with a sense of gratitude and care. As though smiling inwardly. And perhaps noticing your body respond. And part of loving kindness is just wishing yourself well. Having thoughts of benevolence, of care, of respect. And if it helps to bring up these thoughts, these feelings, you can use very simple phrases that you repeat silently to yourself. Connecting with your deepest wish for your own well-being, your safety, Happiness, good health. So if you're used to practicing with certain phrases that work for you, please do that.
or just choose some simple phrases such as, may I be happy, May I be free. May I be healthy. May I be at peace. and see which phrases, which sentiments would really resonate best for you. And connect to the meaning of those phrases. Trusting the power of those intentions to bring forth loving kindness. Allowing the feelings, the emotions of metta. To open the heart. So give some space between each phrase to connect with your heart, with any sensations around the chest. Maybe just a very subtle sense of softening, accepting. Allowing things to be.
And to see if we can start to spread this loving kindness. If you wish, you could bring to mind someone very dear in your life with whom you share perhaps quite a simple, pure, uncomplicated relationship with. Someone you trust. and care for very deeply. Perhaps a teacher, a spiritual friend or best friend in your life. Sometimes people find that meta flows easily to their pet. Maybe you have a dog or a little rabbit. Any being who brings a smile to your heart when you recollect them. Perhaps visualizing them sitting in front or close to you. Or if you're not so visual, just getting a sense of who this being is. How it feels to be with them. Perhaps some quality that you really respect in this being. And just spread these thoughts and wishes, or maybe just a, a, the emotion, the feeling of loving kindness to them. Again, using simple phrases that are really tailored to this particular being. And just enjoying offering these beautiful wishes to this being in your life. And pausing between each phrase to allow the emotion of metta to arise.
Just finding joy in this act of giving from your heart without expecting any particular result. and staying connected to any feelings associated with loving kindness. So you can gently bid this person farewell for now. And allow those thoughts, those feelings to start flowing over into this room toward all these spiritual companions seated here. Everyone here has been practicing together today. It's as though a golden glow starts to emanate from your body from your heart into the room, suffusing everybody here with thoughts of goodwill. Thoughts of kindness and care. All the organizers, Joanna May and Matt. My fellow monastics, everybody here, whether known or unknown to you, but united, connected in this beautiful intentions of being kind, And finding an end to suffering. May we all be happy. Deeply content. May we be safe and healthy. May suffering come to an end. Bringing to mind all the other people in this building right now. The resident monastics, the workers. Even the people in the streets. Getting on with their lives. And all beings in this huge city of London. Many people rushing about. 
doing the best they can. Seeking happiness, just as all beings do. So sharing any peace or happiness in our hearts with everybody in this big city of London. May all beings be well, be safe. May they all be at peace. All human beings and all animals, all beings who grieve, So in the same way, just keep on allowing this meta to flow. From London, from the greater London, this whole little island called the UK. And Ireland too. beyond borders, across the oceans, in every direction, to wherever there's life. With the wish that all beings be safe and happy. Free from suffering and pain. And just imagine this whole planet Earth slowly becoming encompassed by this golden glow of loving kindness. Healing any conflicts, healing any pain. Protecting the animals, insects, and birds. Creatures who live in the oceans and rivers and lakes. All beings. Visible or invisible. Far or near. May they all be happy and free from pain. And just relaxing with this beautiful intentions and feelings of loving kindness, relaxing any effort. And just resting for a while.
noticing any pleasant feelings in your body and mind, any sense of ease or relaxation. Just taking it in. Allowing yourself a moment of peace. A moment of ease. So to end this meditation and to close today, I'd like to chant some blessings of loving kindness to everyone here, along with Venerable Pekka and Ajahn Pramali, if you know the chant. <laughs> so just allow yourself to receive these blessings. You don't have to do anything at all. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Purgala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariyapana Sabai Tio Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Unaviya Sabe Deva Sabe Mimnusa Sabe Winipadika I wear a haunted I Ani ga hontu Suki atanam pari halantu Dukha munjantu Yada lada sampatito Bawe gachantu Hamasaka. So when you're ready, stay connected to any feelings of metta that may have arisen. You can gently open your eyes. We can end the meditation.
Okay, everyone. So very nice to be here today and to meet with you all. And I just thought I would just let you know that the reason I'm here is because of basically because of Anna Chanda and her project. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be here because uh, she's the one who invited me to come to the UK, which is uh, great. Uh, and uh, so I think it, it is suitable just to say a few things uh, very briefly about her project. Uh, and the Kamba project means the Compassion Project, uh, and it's kind of, I suppose, an uh, uh, extending out the Buddhist teachings into the world. Uh, and one of the important things about the way the Buddha established Buddhism two and a half thousand years ago, he established with four uh, assemblies or four gatherings, if you like. And the four gatherings are the monks, yeah, which we have had around for a long time. There hasn't been any lack, lack of monks usually. Actually, sometimes there have been lack of monks as well, but uh, not usually. Uh, then there is the nuns, uh, yeah, and the nuns have kind of recently been reestablished in the Theravada tradition. They've been gone for about a thousand years, uh, and now they kind of have re-emerged after a thousand years. Uh. And then there's the lay women and lay men, yeah, the four assemblies. And so the nuns have been missing for a long, long period of time, especially from Theravada Buddhism, not from Mahayana Buddhism. And uh, so then Chanda's monastery is one of the few places in the world uh, where you can now actually practice with re the real nuns of Theravada Buddhism, and they're kind of coming back again. And uh, it is a very significant and important thing that we gain that balance in Buddhism. Yeah, when the Buddha laid down these four assemblies two and a half thousand years ago, he said that his mission to teach would not be complete until all the four assemblies existed. And they were all very wise. They were all able to teach properly. They were all able to understand these teachings from personal experience. And they were able to kind of to, it even says, refute the views of others. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of your jobs when I want to refute the views of others. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that is now what we are kind of coming back to again. So it's a wonderful thing to get that balance back into Buddhism. And when Machanda is spearheading it here in the UK, it's happening also in other places around the world, like in Australia, in North America, also in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has a very large Bikini community now. And uh, even so, even in Thailand, it is happening slowly uh, and it's kind of coming back again. Uh, and uh, what a wonderful thing that is, that we start getting this balance back into the Buddhist community. Uh, so I would uh, really encourage you, if you have the opportunity to uh, uh, support her project in whatever way you can, uh, yeah, and to kind of make sure that we keep this going because it is very difficult to be a pioneer. It's very, very hard work. Uh, and she's basically doing all the that pioneering work back at the monastery. She told me she's the only bikini in the entire of the UK. So she's very lonely, except for right now when we have a second, the men with Pekka is here, yeah, visiting for a while. Uh, but uh, she is not as permanent as... Uh, well, even when Machanda is not permanent, that would be, <laughs> but more slightly less impermanent, perhaps. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it would be wonderful if you can. And remember that uh, when you support a project like this, you are supporting something very large. You're supporting the spreading of Buddhism basically in the whole world, supporting the increase in happiness in the world, the reduction in suffering. Yeah, yeah it's a large, large thing that is taking part of, or taking part in, I should say. Yeah. So. Uh, Yes, yeah, so anyway, that's all I want to say. So just uh, to kind of have give you some idea what this uh, project is about. Uh, now I shall pass you on to Venable Chanda to say the final last few words. So here you go, Venable. Great. So yeah, thank you to London Insight, first of all, for actually hosting us today. And of course, to Ajahn Brahmali, because without you, there wouldn't have been anyone to host. And um, for all your wonderful teachings and uh, yeah, generosity really in spreading your knowledge and experience and practice of early Buddhism with everybody here. So I really hope it's been uh, interesting for people and will help you deepen your practice. Uh, and that's one of our big aims really with Anukampa Bhikkhuni project. Um, one aspect is, is giving women the opportunity to put full ordination and uh, giving women the opportunity to be represented right, by monastics, because sometimes we can't understand that it's a path that's open to us unless we see other people that we can relate to who've taken that path. So hopefully this will help to uh, um, inspire other women to take deeper steps on the path, whether or not that would include uh, training towards the full ordination as bhikkhunis. And the other aspect of our project, which is equally as important and very much connected, is to spread the teachings of early Buddhism. So that's what we're doing by inviting wonderful teachers such as Ajahn Brahmali over to the UK 
and also Venerable Upeka. And, uh, and we have a lot of programs as well. We too will be doing a, a day retreat in Cambridge at the Quaker Meeting House there on the 17th of June. And you can find our flyers over here. We have lots of online events. We have every week a Sutta discussion on a Friday evening. We have two silent meditation sessions with many of our long-term community members every week, which sounds like, why do you want to turn on Zoom to sit silent with, silently with all these people? But somehow it really supports people in establishing a regular practice. So now you have the Monday with London Insight, Tuesdays and Thursdays with us. We have a Wednesday evening uh, chanting session and we do other kind of meta meditation and Dhamma talks as well. So there's lots there actually to bring community together. And I think this is one of the main purposes of the project because uh, you know, there are lots of different teachers around, but how do you actually form community unless there are places where we can stay? So this is one of the main purposes of what I'm doing, trying to establish a, a little place in Oxford uh, where people can come and spend time with the monastics and uh, yeah, deepen their practice of the path, not just the meditation, but also the service aspect. So there are many ways for you to be involved. Uh, so yeah, I hope to see you again. I'll probably be teaching for London Insight as well. Uh, usually once a year, isn't it? I think February next time, yeah. So uh, just a warm thanks to everybody here and to everybody for your practice because it's so uh, wonderful to meet with spiritual friends who have the same interests, you know, the same inclinations towards the Dhamma, towards peace and the ending of suffering. So thank you, everybody, for the day. Oh, you all know instinctively what that is. Amazing. It means very good. Well done. Awesome. <laughs>